All right, dudes, welcome back. Let's get this out of the way. Welcome back to another restoration or build. This is Montana Sport KHS True Tamper Tubing. Uh, it has a horizontal top tube, so pretty cool. So yeah, let's take a look. All right, got these uh, Shimano levers. I think these are pretty basic, but they look pretty cool. You got this kind of analog <laughs> shifter. And then also this shifter is just one plastic bit. So no springs, I think that's basically works kind of like just like a friction shifter but indexed of course and then same on the other side here you can see yeah pretty interesting easy fire got these are uh, old school grips i think these look like odis a little bit but this pattern's a little bit different just a little bell not bad uh this long stem flat bars I think this is a 22.2 .2 HL brand, straight hanger, made in Taiwan, Republic of China. Yeah, so most, most bikes are made in Taiwan at a two big factory, as I believe. Cool little KHS logo. Uh, I got this little hanger. I think a reflector went on here. And we got Altus brakes. And the rims, we got Wyman USA rims, 4019. Not sure what that is, but yeah, you got the width there, 1.5. A little bit wider than normal, I think. True Tempered Tubing, pretty cool logo, KHS here. And then, yeah, you can see it's straight gauge or plain gauge, which means is the same thickness all the way through. So yeah, what's interesting about this is the tubing is made in USA, but the bike's made in Taiwan. Uh, old school cat eye bridle cage they were pretty popular montana sport yeah made in taiwan again got a livio front d got these heinous cranks pin cranks i'll be re replacing these just generic pedals race proven usa rear cassette looks like it needs to be replaced probably and then olivio rear mac same rims on the back, matching rims, pretty cool. Same brakes on the back, Olivio. SLR, or Altus, sorry. Reflector, got this Sally seat. Pretty comfy, thing's pretty good this one. Hopefully I can fix this a little bit at the back. Comes with a free light and a free lock with no key. Oh, and then the tires, uh, this is front tire. This is a Chang Sing tire and it's 26 uh by 1.95 and in the back we've got a little bit of a different tread here it's a uh, innova and it's same width 26.195 you can check the clearance here pretty pretty close actually but yeah yeah we'll see how this goes i think it's a pretty cool frame this deep deep green um but yeah i'm unsure what to make of it at, at the moment should it be like Cruiser, moto, drop bars, I don't know yet. So yeah, we'll take it apart and see how we go. All right, first things first, gotta do this. <laughs> Bit of spider webs. Make sure you get under the seat. And hold the press. All right, taking off the seat. Uh, it was a little bit hard, but it came out. It wasn't too bad. I always check to make sure the seat post isn't seized in the seat tube when I buy a bike. Just because it's a super hassle to get it out. Sometimes you can't get it out either. So yeah, better just to avoid <laughs> avoid the issue. Here, taking the chain off, pretty simple. Just pop, pop the rivet out. And then I've been cutting my cables like that. Uh, when I take stuff off now, it just makes it way easier. Get the cable out of the way and you don't even have to undo where the cable is clamped. Just undo it later when you cleaning the parts makes it easier and then here taking the crank off sometimes you can use the other crank arm for leverage or hold it up align with the chain stay or seat tube to get a little bit more leverage but this one came out pretty easy and just spraying a bit of WD-40 inside there give it a soak to help loosen it up and then yeah just wind your tool all the way in and I like to give it a little bit of a turn to make sure it's fully fully seated in there and then yeah, pop the other pin through and it should should pop it out. Make sure there's no washers in there, of course. 
But yeah, these cranks came out pretty easy. Didn't have to screw it down too hard. That was it. Taking off this funky uh, back stand and bottle cage. Again, cutting the cables at the top and then just popping the brakes off. Uh, make sure you hold on to everything when you slide it out. You don't want your springs dropping and then you have to find them. Taking off the reflectors as well. And then here, same, same with the front. Yeah. It's way quicker when you don't have to undo the clamp where the brake cable is, you just cut them. And yeah, just line them out. That's uh, yeah, if you don't want to reuse the brake cables. Most of the bikes I pick up are pretty rusted, but if you pick up a bike that has nice brake cables, shiny brake cables still, or gear cables, you might be able to reuse them. But yeah, most of these bikes I just yeah kind of pop everything off now and just chuck them out. Popping the cables out. Uh, yeah, when you pop out this hanger, be careful of this little washer. Uh, you definitely <laughs> Definitely don't want to uh, lose that. Sometimes you might not notice, and you're looking for it later, and you can't understand why the cable won't fit. So yeah, put it in a safe place. And then the same with the top here, cutting off the brake cables at the levers, and then using a little bit of WD four to get these grips grips out. Popping off the levers and the bell and other accessories. Nothing too crazy here, just uh, undo it and it should slide off. Here, popping out the bars. Yeah, slide them out, no issues. And then, yeah, the stem, sometimes it might take a bit of effort, um, but yeah, this one came out pretty easily. Just hold on to the frame and pull it out. And then here, a little leverage for this little lock ring. Uh, you can see I'm using the chain stay to get leverage, and that really helps. Sometimes, uh, if you just try to do it with that, that extra leverage makes it really hard and the tool could slip. So, yeah, definitely want that. And then here, I was trying to take the BB out, and I just wasn't using this Pedro's BB tool. And I got so used to using the Petro's PB tool that I needed to put it back on because it was just way easier. You don't have to hold on to, hold on to the tool, hold on to the BB spindle. Um, but then, yeah, the other side uh, it doesn't have it, so because I already took the BB out, so yeah, you just got to hold it with your thumb and then spin it out. But yeah, you can see it's uh, just caged bearings in there. Hopefully, give these a clean. The bearings. Uh, they don't seem too bad and they don't, the, the spindle doesn't look too worn down. And then here just giving a quick clean, uh, just using the spray of a little bit of detergent and water and a little bit of soap in there. And then yeah, this took a few a few runs a few times to get it nice and clean over. There's a lot of dirt and dust. For some reason every time I kept wiping, uh, there was just more dirt and dust it didn't all come off at once so you just got to repeat the process. A little bit of WT40 here to take off the take off the sticker. I think it looks pretty cool with KHS logo and the paint looks really really cool as well with the dark green and the, the gold. The gold and the deep purple and blue. Bluish purple. And then again here with the stickers Sometimes you can use like a heat gun or a hair, hair dryer to make these come off a little bit easier. But yeah, sometimes if you don't have to struggle too much, I just don't bother with the hair dryer just because yeah, too lazy to kind of plug it in <laughs> and run the extension cord out. But here you can say use a Pedro's lever to scrape it off. They're hard to get stickers and that works pretty well on any type of plastic. Yeah, you can see the top tube here is pretty rough. So what I'm going to do is T-cut it. Tico is basically a uh, yeah, car color restorer. It's just basically a, a very light polish and it'll get rid of the top, uh, top scratches. Uh, not any deep scratches, but it'll kind of buff them over a little bit, kind of like really, really, really fine sandpaper. And yeah, you 
first you apply a tea cut and then you apply water and then it should smooth it out a lot. It works pretty well on um, the scratches I think. Yeah you can see how it looks here, it looks pretty good. Make sure you wear gloves and stuff. But yeah I did do two runs over with this to get it looking like that. Um, sometimes yeah if you have more scratches you may, might need to do a third time. But basically here I'm just doing the, the rest of the frame and to do to do the frame what I'd suggest is just do one one section at a time. So do your forks and then do down tube, seat tube, and then chain stays, and then that kind of helps you keep track of where you're where you're doing it. And yeah, that works uh, that works pretty well for me. So yeah, I sped it up, but yeah, that's what the frame looks like. It took way longer than it looks on video, but I think it was worth it. It looks really cool, really like brings the brings the frame back to life. And yeah, that's the frame all ready to go. All right, so I just realized that this has like an old type cassette. So before I do anything with this wheel, I'm gonna see if I can get it off first. All right, so you can see there's a lock ring here and it's uh, an SR one. And then this has kind of the old style loosening points, which is just two, a notch here and a notch here. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a little bit of trouble might end up having to leave this on, but I'll take a quick look online and see how I can get this off. So yeah, it turns out it's a two notch tool. I had this posted on my story and luckily Will was kind enough to reach out to me and send me a tool. So yeah, big shout out to Will, appreciate that. And he's just monkey shred getting it off with a screwdriver. It's probably what I was gonna do if I couldn't get the tool. Basically you remove the cap and then take off the cassette and then the remaining bit will be screwed on still and you just take that off with a wrench. All right, so got everything out. Uh, I'm gonna use the seat post seat, these derailers and these brakes. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the bars yet, but if I use flat type bars, I'll use those shifters. And then here, I actually got this chain ring from the previous build. I uh, ordered two at once, so this is set and these XH country cranks, pretty solid. These are the upgrade I'm gonna do. Uh, but yeah, these are 110 BCD. And I'm just gonna run a smaller ring that I had on the inside. Probably make it two by, uh, two by seven or two by eight. And then I'm just waiting for the tool <laughs> for this thing to get off. But I think meanwhile, what I can do is clean these wheels and then clean these parts and then keep it going. Yeah, sometimes it helps me just to kind of lay everything out so you know what you got and what you need to kind of get. Otherwise, it could be a little bit hard working it out or in your head, unless you got a super good memory. All right, just clean the wheels here, taking these reflectors off. Uh, these actually had little screws, which is better than those clipping ones. And then just using my uh, pressure sprayer, just has water and a bit of dish detergent in there. And yeah, just give it spray down, get rid of all the spider webs, all the dirt. Um, I also use a nylon brush just to give it a, a once over as well. And that really, that really helps. And then yeah, after I do that, just spray it down and then use a, a little brush and WD-40 for any kind of tough tough areas. Um, here's the front rim again. Uh, when you're doing it, just be careful of the stickers if you want to keep the stickers. And then cleaning the hubs. These hubs are pretty clean. Uh, the outside anyway, pretty clean. And yeah, same method again. A little bit of WD-40, give it a brush, spray it with the soap spray to get rid of everything and it should be uh, should be sweet. And here just doing the inside, yeah, you gotta stick your brush in there between the spokes a little bit. Hard to reach, but um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And then here, the same thing with the, the back wheel again. Sometimes you have to use brake cleaner. If you're using WD-40, make sure you don't get WD-40 on the rim. If you do get on the rim, make sure you use brake cleaner to get it off. All right, so just gonna give these a clean. It's not too bad, but yeah, just put them on the drill press, brush them up a little bit. It's going to use WD-40 and should come up good. Here, just changing out the piece, 
for this kind of softer, softer piece. Just like I think it used to be a sanding disc, but I took all the all the little sanding bits out, so it's kind of just like a brush. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well just to polish things up a little bit. Just take the take the burrs off and make them a little bit more uniform. And then here, just using a WD-40 again, wire brush, brush the inside of those where the screws are. And in here, I just want to show you a little technique. There's a little bit of paint here, but obviously I buffed them and it didn't come off. So you can use a little bit of T-cut, a little bit of a polishing cut, just to uh, cut off that paint on the exterior. And yeah, it works pretty well. And then yeah, just give it a brush, a wash, and then you're good. Cranks are looking good. Here's a, another little extra bit. I did the same on, but yeah, it works pretty well. All right, so cranks are looking good. Um, what I like to do is, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. Uh, I like to just re-thread it, or just make sure the threads are running pretty nicely, and I'll put a little bit of grease on the crank removal tool, and then wind it through just to make sure there's no like sand or anything in there, no burrs. And then, yeah, just cleaning up the chain rings, gave a little buff up, and everything's looking sweet. All right, here cleaning up the parts. Yeah, put on some gloves, really helps you uh, from having to wash your hands a lot. And then what I'm doing here is just taking taking everything apart first so I can give it a good clean. Uh, what almost helps is if you brush everything down with a nylon brush, get rid of all the dirt, but when you take it apart, all the dirt kind of falls out anyway. And then cleaning any extra dirt with just a piece of kitchen paper so it doesn't go down the sink. Um, but here I'm putting it in a little strainer, strainer I got from Daiso, it's just uh, $2.80 and yeah, it folds up, it's pretty, pretty nice, works well for this kind of stuff and it helps you from not losing any parts down the sink and then basically just sprayed it with the soap detergent spray, putting a little bit of detergent in the water here, just warm water and then give everything uh, a brush up, trying to get all that uh, dirt and extra grease off. And then one thing you got to be careful about is that your brush doesn't get too much grease on it. Otherwise, you're going to be brushing your parts, and then yeah, just make it make it worse. Basically, you're just basically brushing gr more grease on your parts. So what you can do is just uh, spray it with a little bit of WD-40, and then it should uh, rinse out all the grease from there. So yeah, you can see these shifters are looking pretty good, nice and clean. The derailers still had some uh, leftover kind of grease or dirt on them. So I just brushed it with a wire brush and a little bit of WD-40 and that cleaned it all up. And then here just the same with all the other brake parts as well, or the little bolts, the BB, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I had people ask me how do I keep, uh, how do I know where all the parts kind of go? And I think this just comes over time. You get used to it. But uh, if you if you don't if you're unsure where all the parts go, just yeah, take a photo or take a video when you're taking a part, and then you can just go back and refer to it, refer back to it. But yeah, usually the parts uh, only really fit in certain spots, so you can do a process of elimination. But yeah, you can see all the all the bolts here. Just clean them up. All the bolts that are still in the tray, I'm going to drop those in vapor rust to get with the get rid of the rust so yeah that's basically it everything's pretty much cleaned all right this tool came super psyched on this thank you will appreciate it so yeah it's actually a, a santo one made in japan so og two notch let's uh let's see how it goes all right so this was uh, a little bit of a mission you can see when i put it in for some reason it doesn't sit flat so I tried to yeah, just tap it in with the hammer. I compared the size of it and the size difference on the outer edge is just uh, less than one millimeter on each side, maybe less than half a millimeter. So I thought it just could kind of squash in there. So first thing I thought was the axle was uh, blocking it. So I decided to take it apart the axle so that bolt wasn't in the way and then yeah, now pushing it in <laughs> for some reason it still didn't fit. And yeah, I just couldn't work out why because the, the free wheel is Suntour 
and the tool is sun tool as well so you think it fit but anyway I decided to put a skew on and just kind of clamp it down a little bit and hopefully it works like that and then I tried uh, yeah just putting a bit of a bit of weight on it and it still didn't come free so the next thing I thought was I'll do I just tap it out a little bit maybe if I tap it out the tool will fit in a little bit better so I just used a screwdriver and hammer and tapped it out, tapped out the sides. Um, it didn't really fit any better, <laughs> I don't think. Um, I think maybe just in my mind it probably fit better, but now looking back on it, yeah, I don't think it did. Um, but anyway, I clamped on the the, uh, the skewer to keep the tool on and then just tried to open it with the with this breaker bar, you can see I tried all these different angles, took tons of effort, sprayed it with the WD-40 penetrating oil. Didn't nothing seem to not, nothing seemed to be working. Um, yeah, here's the penetrating oil. A bit more on that. Um, and then here I'm tightening the skewer because <laughs> I wanted the tool on there, and then the end of the skewer just popped off. <laughs> So I ended up breaking a skewer on this one. Luckily I had all these other old skewers so I could keep trying. But yeah, this was kind of super frustrating. Um, I just didn't know why I wasn't coming out. And I was like, I read online that people put it in a vise and they can turn it. So I tried that, putting, putting, trying to do the pressure from the wheel. And then what happened was it ended up bend, bending the skewer that was in there, that it was clamped to the tool. So I had to unscrew that rebend it a little bit um, but yeah eventually <laughs> I just kind of went full ham on it with the tool and uh, I just like I just cranked down as hard as I can like what what could uh, what could go wrong but yeah you can see it took tons of effort trying to get the right leverage But yeah, the finally uh, finally broke loose, um, and then you gotta just unloosen the skewer when you take it out so it has room to move. But yeah, it took that took so much effort I couldn't believe it. I thought it was just as simple as putting a tool in and popping it off. Um, even with uh, pyro knowledge, using a breaker bar and all that kind of stuff, yeah, still was mad effort. But yeah, it's off now, and you can see how tight the tools in there I had to like knock it out with a hammer it was in there so tight but yeah the tool's super solid actually I was surprised by the tool the metal the metal is super strong so yeah here you can see a skewer that got popped off popped clean off and then this is the other skewer that got bent with the tool that was in there um, and then here's the sun tool, tool, uh, tool. you can see that it's kind of still intact but I think it bent the thing just like a tiny bit but still yeah super strong I was putting tons and tons of pressure through it but uh it came through <laughs> so yeah stoked on this one and yeah shout out Will <laughs> for this tool all right so I got this uh batch of vapor rust that I've been saving I guess but um yeah you can see it's pretty pretty gnarly I guess it kind of um, settles if you don't use it, but yeah, just give it a mix up and then I'm going to pour a little bit in here. It does seem quite thick though, for some reason, I don't know, see how it goes. I don't remember the vapor rust looking like this, but yeah, we'll see if it works. So yeah, I have a few other stems where the bolts are pretty rusted through. I'm gonna give these, this one seems all right. I think that someone painted like the top of these bolts and then there's some rust underneath, so see how it goes. And then there's a, uh, yeah, these ones are pretty rusted. But we'll see, yeah, I'm gonna take these off and see how we go. All right, here's the bolts. Yeah, you can see these are pretty pitted, so we'll see how those go. And then I think these, hoping this is just surface rust. 
So yeah, let's drop me in. It's pretty cool. I never noticed this before. Seems like something's happening, maybe. But yeah, I always forget some bolts. So I'm gonna chuck these in too. Of course, <laughs> doesn't fit. I have to turn it around. All right, just gonna give these bearings a service. So yeah, basically you just take off one side and then you don't have to worry about where the spacer goes. Um, yeah, that's a good little tip. And then just when you're taking it out, be careful of any four bearings that might fall out. You can see here, I'm just pulling the axle out a little bit and using a magnet to pull out all the bearings. And yeah, just make sure you get each one. And then the same with the other side. It's pretty good actually, the axle wasn't rusted or anything and then the bearings weren't super pitted as well and then just giving this a clean what I end up realizing you can just pop this plastic spacer out so it makes the uh, cleaning way easier some hubs are actually that plastic bit is actually metal so you can't get it out but here can, I'm just using a, a little bit of d 40 and some foil just to clean it up and then yeah same same process on the other side just pop it out with the spanner and yeah, use a brush if needed. But yeah, these cleaned up pretty good, I think. Putting some new grease in with the Duco grease gun. Um, yeah, this has gone be, been gone pretty strong, this tool. I did not know how I worked without it before, but yeah, super handy. Shout out to bike for sending it. Yeah, I've already filled, refilled it once, and yeah, no problems at all. Very handy to have. Yeah, when you're sliding the axle through, just make sure you don't push on any bearings, otherwise, you push a bearing through that cylinder is going to be a pain to get a bearing out and then put it back in. But here, yeah, just packing up more grease, putting the bearings in, just make sure they're covered, nice and covered. Don't forget that little plastic cap or your bearings will fall out. And then uh, putting the cone spacer back on and the, the nut. So yeah, you just got to be careful when you do this. You just basically want it pretty tight but not so tight that it's grinding on your bearings and you don't want any axle play. So yeah, it takes a little bit to go back and forth with tightening the cone against the, the nut, but um, yeah, play around with it and eventually you'll get it. All right, so counting my bearings again. And it seems like it's 10, not nine, so I gotta take it apart and yeah, add that one extra bearing in. Yeah, this is a little bit of a pain. I can't believe uh, I miscounted it, but yeah, you just pull the axle out a little bit and then drop it in, tighten the axle. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I recounted it, otherwise it would have been missing a bearing. All right, so here I'm taking apart the rear hub and you can see yeah, the axle's longer, but same process, I push it out, pop the shield off. But yeah, these were caged bearings. Um, and you can see how bent this one was. So the back wheel wasn't spinning that good. So I think that's kind of toast. So what I'm gonna do is just put loose ball bearings in there. And then um, you might be asking oh, how many bearings to put in. Uh, so I'm just gonna put in how many, however many fits, but you gotta always leave a, a little gap. So the bearings have room to move around. You don't want them super tight in there. Um, but yeah, I ended up cleaning it up and putting those bearings in. Um, make sure they're the same size as the, the caged bearings. And then, yeah, just same process. Put it, put the cap back on, grease it up, and then do the, do the same for the other side. Ended up working pretty well. I think the bearings, I think it was uh, eight, eight or nine bearings. I can't remember, you can probably count them here. But um, it ended up being a great fit. And yeah, you can see the cone spacer was total from that caged bearing. So I'm replacing it with the one on the right. It's uh, it's not brand new, but it's way better than the old one. And then it ended up yeah spinning way better. All right, doesn't look like a much, but these two wheels are ready to go. All right, one last thing to do is sometimes you might get that. So I just want to realign the valve. So basically you just let some air out and just slide the tube over so it's more perpendicular. This one's not too bad, but yeah, I'm just gonna fix those up.
All right, that's done. Way better. All right, here it is after a few hours. Looks like it's all settled in the bottom here, but it looks pretty clean inside. So I'm going to take this out. Seems like most of the rust is off all the bolts. These black ones seem to be taking a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna let it keep soaking for a little bit, maybe overnight and then check tomorrow morning. All right, this is the next day, so let's check it out. Yeah, basically if it's not done now, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come off. You can see the bolts are slightly darker. Alright, you can see it's pretty good. Got rid of all the rust, pretty happy with it. Basically what I need to do now is just give it a rinse and spray with WD-40 to give it, um, just to protect it from flash rusting and should be good. Alright, that's all rinsed up. So yeah, just want to show you the difference. This is chrome plated and you can see you got it all off. Chrome is in good condition not pitted and then here this is the difference between when the rust has gotten underneath the chrome the vapor rust will still get rid of the rust but you can see it's pretty pitted um, sometimes it starts to flake off after this but yeah still all right not the best and then here this is um this is steel no coating on it, the rust is going to come off. You can, uh, yeah, you can scratch these up or use a wire brush to brush them up. Pretty, pretty rough and all the rust will get off and then it'll stay the same. But yeah, the difference between those three. Here's the stems, all kind of done. Probably not for this project, but I just wanted to show you the bolts if it wants to focus. But yeah, pretty clean. I did rub some um, foil and WD-40 on them. But yeah, looking pretty sweet. All right, so I couldn't find any shorter bolts. So I'm gonna have to run these spaces on the outside. But yeah, I don't know if, I did another video, but you can see it basically it's a little too thick. So I just have to file down like one of the edges. And I gotta do that five times and it should uh, should fit. Yeah, so basically just file these by hand, just against the file. Uh, took a little bit, I guess, to do all five, but it wasn't too bad. And then here, you can see the washers are a little bit bent. I think just bending them back made it uh, screw in a little bit easier. These are called spring washers, I think they're called. All right, there's one. And I'll just do the other ones. Oh, there we go. And the unit chain ring too. All right, that's it, all done. You're probably asking, wouldn't it be easy just to get the right size bolts? And yeah, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> um, but at least if they ever decide to go three wide or put a chain guard on, they'll have the right size bolts. All right, basically build time. So I'm just chucking everything on what I can because I was uh, just sick of having parts everywhere. I'm just putting the wheels on, putting the skewers on easy here the wheels are spinning good and here just installing the BB um, so when I was putting on this BB I was looking at my crank and I just didn't know my crank would fit so I had to take a take a look at that so I ended up just installing one side and took a look all right so the crank is just sitting on there and I haven't wound it in yet so I think I'm trying to hold this as straight as possible but I feel like it's pretty damn close. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna see if I have another BB that's a bit longer. All right, so I had to take the old one off and then I ended up uh, finding uh, one that I had in my tools box. It's like a, an old BB, but spun really well. And yeah, I chucked that on to see how it would, uh, see how it fit and probably a nice upgrade to be uh, sealed bearings as well. All right, so I think that's way better. I'm running two by anyway, so 
I think once I clamp this down, it should probably go in maybe like two, three mil. I think that would be perfect. I'm gonna check the other arm, make sure it clears here. So yeah, I think it should be pretty good. All right, just giving the BB side a tighten on this side. Um, just because I had it not super tight when I tried the crank arm, arm on, in case I need to take it off. And if you same thing with the other side, make sure you grease it up. Uh, I just used the use this wrench to put it on and then yeah this installed all right here I am creasing up the, the threads again or the tapers um, yeah there's big uh, big controversy on whether people do this or not um, it's funny because it's split about 50 50 I ran polls on my Instagram my past and it's always usually split but um, yeah my conclusion is uh, just a, a little bit of grease on the tapers is probably best. If you've ever taken a lot of square taper crank arms on, you'll know there's nothing worse than a seized crank on there. It can be a huge headache, so I think a little bit of grease goes a long way. Um, but yeah, you can make your own choice, of course. And in here, just yeah, screwing on the, the drive side. And that's, uh, yeah, that's spinning nicely. All right, I just want to show you after how close the middle ring is. So yeah, pretty decent. Not too close as before. I think it's perfect. Here installing the derailleur with a little bit of grease and uh, wind it on. Make sure it works. But yeah, it springs pretty good. And then here the front mech just on uh, loose for now. I'm gonna adjust it later. All right, just about to chuck these brakes on and I thought it might be worth explaining just in case you get it mixed up. So sometimes there's like a gold tinted and a silver ring. The silver one is almost always on the right and then the gold one is on the left. And then so you might be asking like what's left and what's right. So if they're just facing you, this is uh, the left and then this is the right. So yeah, chucking these on, just put a little bit of grease on where that round bit is, <laughs> seal in the bit is, and then um, yeah, bolt them down. That's basically it, not much to it here. Try not to get grease inside the hole. And yeah, just make sure they spring back. That should be good. Alright, so one of these things snapped and I have to replace it. Luckily I have this bit, but now the hole's in the wrong spot, so I gotta draw a hole right there. So yeah, I got a 1.5 drill bit here, and then just drill it by hand. Should be pretty easy because it's plastic. Alright, it was just uh, easy to drill off camera and you can see it's all the way through. So yeah, we'll see if it fits. I think that's actually two, two millimeter hole and then this is 1.5 drill bit, but yeah, I'll we'll clean it out and see how it goes. Yeah, it turns out it doesn't fit, so I'm gonna use a two millimeter drill bit and then just chase it through. Alright, this is the two mil. So yeah, that just kind of clicks on like that. There's a little tab and then just make sure you put it in the right hole here. And then I ended up putting it back on the bike. And yeah, it worked perfect. So stick with that, putting these little bolts on the end. And then yeah, trying to clean up all these other bolts here, put everything together, putting the C-clamp together. Um, yeah, this is pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. The, the parts just kind of go on like a normal seat clamp and then here just putting on the bike for now just to get out of the way I think that's looking pretty uh, sharp as well nice and clean all right this came today so yeah cassette Gonna chuck it on here yeah so just take the wheel off and then you gotta take the skewer out before you put it on and then here um, because it was stuck before it, took, it was so hard to get off, I uh, 
took no chances and greased it up a bunch. And then what you can do is just basically just screw this on by hand. Um, I do have a, a tool, an old Shimano tool to chuck it on, but if you um, if you pedal, you're just gonna tighten it as well. But um, yeah, I ended up just putting it on with the tool. You can see it's sounding pretty good. All ready to go. All right, so cassette's on. Got a couple more things to clean up. Uh, just a seat post and stem, I believe, that's it. And yeah, I'm just gonna use WD-40 brush and give it a buff, buff up on the drill press. So yeah, the piece on the drill, it, it was actually um, a soft kind of sandpaper drill bit with little sheets of sandpaper on the inside, but I ended up ripping, up, ripping all the sandpaper bits out just so I could have a kind of just a smooth once over brush. And that ended up working really well. Um, it will take off a lot of the grime and a lot of bits on there, but it won't uh, completely sand down the, the stem. But you can see, yeah, the stem's looking pretty good. Just a nice overall clean. And then here with the WD-40 again to get rid of, try to get rid of all the grease and gunk off first before you buff it up. Um, otherwise your, your drill bit will get real dirty, but then yeah, ended up working pretty well. Here cleaning up the little seat clamp bits again. Um, same process again. Just be careful when you're holding it. Don't want it to fly off anywhere and wear protection of course. And then here yeah, just putting the seat clamp together. I think the seat and the stem is looking nice. Putting all the bolts back in. Um, all the rust came off the bolts. And then here just installing the seat post. Um, grease it up so it doesn't seize. Um, but yeah, you, you notice there was a, a problem, like for some reason it do, didn't fit and I was like, ah, oh, I pulled it out, it must must be the right size. So yeah, it didn't fit for some reason and I was like, okay, I'll just give the inside the tube clean, um, use a little bit of sandpaper, WD-40, um, just to get rid of any burrs or anything. I'm just using 600 wet and dry, um, but yeah, still didn't fit. So I took a look at it and it turns out the it was a, a little bit bent. It was a little clamped down and bent. So I ended up using a chain whip tool to kind of bend it back out. And that ended up working really well. So you can see it fits, fits pretty perfect now. And then when I put um, the clamp back on, it'll make it the right size again, as long as I don't over, over clamp it, over tighten it. Um, but yeah, make sure you grease it up, put it in, and that's working well. Stoked on that. Here putting on the little hanger and tightening up the headset. The headset was spun pretty well so I didn't bother servicing it. Um, I think it was fine the way it was. And then here putting in the stem, make sure you grease that up as well. And then I just set it up for the, the max height. I think it would be good to have a little bit of rise on it. And then here, putting on the bars, I decided to put the moth bars on. I did take these off my rock hopper. Um, but uh, yeah, but I want to try these bars on a, a rigid frame to see how it feels. See if it feels any different rather than shocks. But yeah, these are by Magic Components from Japan. And yeah, they're nice and wide. I think they have a really nice shape to it. I have a, a review on my YouTube as well if you want to see it. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to tell probably on video. Alright, so I know what it is. So basically because I used these bars and that thinned out stem, I should probably use a thinner style seat just to match it up. I think that's what make it was making it look a little funny with the fat saddle. But yeah, here we go. All right, so you're thinking, oh, good because we put this saddle in, you won't have to fix up the other one. You can just put this on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to just patch this one up. So I got to sand it up, sand it up a little bit. This uh, Nitsu glue, I got a tutorial on how to fix saddles if you're keen, and then just clean up the bottom. But yeah, nothing's ever, <laughs> ever as simple as just chucking it on. Alright, so I usually use 600, but 
I found some 400 and this has been used already so pro evens out to uh, yeah pro evens out to 600 so yeah, here just using the soap spray that I have and just scraping it with the wet and dry sandpaper. I try not to go too hard on this because if you go too hard, you'll definitely rip it. Um, but yeah, just cleaning up the inside, cleaning up the outside, trying to get rid of some of the rust on the rails as well. Um, but yeah, ended up working pretty well and then here um, just to give it a little bit of protection, use uh, this uh, coconut oil moisturizer. Um, I've used it on previous saddles before and works pretty well. Uh, but yeah, you can see cleaned up all right. And here, just installing the seat. I think it looks pretty good. I think it suits this bike. All right, putting on the the shifters and the brake levers. Just slide these on. Um, usually I just do these on loose before I tighten them up so I can put the grips on to see where the levers go. And then here just using water to put the grips on. These are the same grips off the bike, um, but I think they look pretty cool. Just like a simple style. And then here just tying up the grips, uh, tying up the levers. Here putting a bolt on the front mech. And what you want your front mech to, to do is to clear the chain ring by two to three millimeters um, and then yeah you can also push it towards the ring to make sure it's clearing it's not going to scrape it when you pull on the front mac and then here I didn't want to see this logo <laughs> so I ended up flipping it around just like that I think it was like that on like that originally anyway and then here just putting on the cabling um, with cabling what you want to do is just make sure you have uh, enough cable so you can turn the wheel and there's no uh, there's no tension. Um, you just want a pretty smooth line as well. All right, when you're measuring the cable for the derailleur, the housing, just make sure you kind of pull down, and you can see the actual length. Otherwise, if you cut it like that, it might be a little too short. So yeah, you can always cut it long, and then if it's too long, you can trim it down. Alright, just like that. And yeah, basically what you want is just like a smooth line without too many hard bends. Alright, after you cut it, just make sure you check the, the cable ends. See how that little plastic bit's folded over. Sometimes you just need to put a, push your old spoke through, and that helps. Or you can uh, re-trim a little bit. Just using this uh, seal pick tool from Boot Bike. Yeah, shout out Boot Bike. It's pretty handy to have. All right, all trimmed up. You can see the cables here, just kind of sitting in there. But yeah, I was unsure where to put this one through. I could have looped it around the top as well, but I think I like, like it better with no cables going over the bars when I'm riding. And then you can see just the top here, try to have it as even as possible. Seems, uh, seems all right. One thing I forgot about, just gotta put this on. Um, actually goes under, under here, like this. All right, putting the cables on, can't forget about these little things. Show you where they go. All right, here just lacing the cables through. Um, sometimes I use a little bit of a, a chain lube, synthetic chain lube, to make it slide extra nice inside the housing. And um, I did that for these cables. So I only got two rings here, so I want to limit this from going too far out that way. I can show you, basically when I press it, I don't want it to go anymore. So I'm gonna use the high limit screw. And what it's gonna do is gonna limit how far this pushes out that way.
All right, that's done. See when I push it down, I can't actually push anymore. And then this is what it looks like. Yeah. Just about to chuck these on and um, you can see this A and B. So basically they're two different lengths. One's longer than the other. Usually they're the same. But what I've decided to do is run the longer one in front because I think the clearance is a little bit more. And then this one in the back. Here, just lacing up the cables. Um, yeah, for some reason, lacing cables is all, always takes longer than I think. For some reason, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, maybe <laughs> when you build bikes, just allow for a little bit of extra time. All right, so I put the back one on. It seems pretty aligned, so that's good. The front one is swaying to this side a little bit. So I'm actually gonna take this off and then move the pin, move that little pin in there to have more tension. Usually what you can do, there's a little screw here and you can adjust it. Um, but because I replaced that other one over there, I got to do it, yeah, manually. All right, so you can see I moved it to the top hole which gave me a little bit more tension. And then yeah, pretty good I think. So yeah, usually I put the brake pads on first before I lace it up. But I just want to try this time lacing it up first. And what you want to do is wind this out around seven times. That's going to tighten the brakes a little bit. So you can put your brake pads directly on the rim, nice and flush. And what you're going to do after you set your brake pads is wind this back in and it will loosen your brake pads out and give you enough gap. Here you're putting the candy brakes on. Um, yeah, what I find really helps is I have a little 10, 10 mil wrench and you can kind of just adjust it on the back and don't have to worry about it. All right, so these are on. I just basically try to keep these uh, 90 degrees, and then these are how the bits go. There we go, working sweet. All right, you're just tucking in the brake cable. I like to do this, things nice and neat, and then you can just give it a trim on the back. Just make sure, yeah, it clears the wheel, it doesn't hit your spokes or anything. And that's good, and basically I just did the same with the rear brakes, make sure it's set up nicely. That's working well. All right, checking the chain on. Yeah, usually chains come with a sticky factory grease just to protect it using a smooth loop prep to uh, clean the chain. And this will help get rid of the stickiness. If you just run it sticky, it's gonna pick up tons of grime. Um, the lube that usually comes from the factory, unless it's specified, it's not for riding. Um, but yeah, check your pack to see what it is. And then yeah, just give it a clean, give it a wash. The smooth lube cleaner is actually pretty good. It um, smells really good. It smells like citrus actually, you probably can't tell through the video. But here just sizing up the chain, so the biggest cog on the back and biggest chain on the front and then you add um, four four links or two full links and then um, yeah just make sure you be careful when you size it to make room for the quick link that you're going to add on if your chain has a quick link um, but yeah you can see this is fitting pretty well you just feed it through and then what I like about the quick link is you can just uh, pull it tight and it's installed just like that Okay, you can see here that's not shifting when I click it. And then what I'm doing is I'm winding the adjuster barrel out to create more tension on the on the gear cable. So that's gonna pull on the derail a little bit more. Um, you can see it's shifting now, but uh, it's still a little bit funky, especially on the biggest cog. You can see it's trying to jump up to the last one when it's on the second last one. 
So I had to wind the barrel just a yin a little bit to give a little bit more slack so it's not jumping. And you just want to keep doing this until you have a smooth sounding change. Um, so yeah, you can see it's working pretty well now. So what you want to do is just cycle through all the gears again, make sure it's working well. Make sure it goes through all the gears one by one. Yeah, looking on the video now, it looks like it could go a tiny bit tighter, the tension on the cable. But yeah, I'll fix that. Fix that when I go riding. And then here, um, same with the, the front front Mac actually. It switches up and down. Um, you just want to make sure it's spinning smoothly, but yeah, you can probably go slightly slightly tighter. But yeah, things working pretty well. Just make sure it goes up and down. You can make a final tweaks as you ride and as the gear cables break in. What you want to do is also cycle through all the gears on both chain rings to make sure the chain isn't scraping on your front mech. Um, but yeah, mine didn't, so that was good. All right, looping up the chain with the smooth loop chain grease. Well, I think it's called cream actually. Um, but I, yeah, this is wax face. Make sure you do it on the inside, not the outside. And then yeah, just adding these animal petals on. Um, just grease, grease up the tapers, grease up the threads, I mean. All right, these are on, spinning well. And here, cutting the cables and putting the end caps on. Um, you can bend it back a little bit, make sure it's not poking out. And then yeah, same thing with the front mech. And that's it, here's the final bike. super fun bike super solid uh, really responsive I think uh, the gearing I thought was a little too small at the beginning but then once I went off-road it was perfect I think if anything I would change the front bigger ring to a few more teeth maybe a 40 to 42 44 the bars actually felt sick on the rigid I thought it wouldn't be that much different but you can feel uh, it has a little bit of give so it's nice you can really feel the, the rough gravel Big shout out to Jason, Max and Michael for your generous donations. Uh, yeah, it really helps out. If you want to donate to Next Build, it's in the description. Shout out to anyone who bought stickers as well. Uh, yeah, that helps. And if you want those, those are in the shop. Thank you to all my supporters. And thank you for watching, for making it this far. Uh, hope you liked it. And I will catch you for the next one. Peace.